Considering that it's been going longer than most of its current fan base has been alive, it's no surprise that there's plenty of Doctor Who that never made it to the screen. Whether they were cut from the script, removed during editing, or were just crazy ideas running through Moffat's head, it's always fun to talk about these what-if moments. So with that in mind, I'm Ellie with Who Culture here with 10 Doctor Who scenes you weren't allowed to see. Number 10. A Crowded Regeneration when David Tennant bowed out as the Tenth Doctor, he got a guard of honour to see him on his way, embarking on a farewell tour to say goodbye to some of his nearest and dearest. And when it came time to bid adieu to his successor, plans were in place to do something similar. Stephen Moffat initially wanted a bunch of people from the Eleventh Doctor's era to turn up during his regeneration scene in 2013's The Time of the Doctor. Onlookers would have included River Song, Rory, Rory's dad, the Paternoster Gang, Dorian Maldivar, and even Craig Owens. However, all of these familiar faces were nixed from the final scene, presumably because it would have been hella weird if they'd all just showed up in the TARDIS. Only Amy Pond would turn up as a vision before the dying Raggedy Doctor, and based on the countless tears this moment caused, that was undoubtedly the right decision. Number 9. The Einstein Plot Time and the Rani is an infamous serial among the Who faithful. It was the beginning of the final chapter of the show's original TV run, and it also saw Colin Baker regenerate into Sylvester McCoy without Baker actually being there. Oh uh, well, nothing a cheap wig can't fix. McCoy made his first appearance as the Time Lord in the serial's pre credit sequence. This wasn't always the plan though, as the writers originally had an absolutely bonkers idea to introduce the story's titular villain. The Rani was initially going to show up and kidnap Albert Einstein, kickstarting the plot of the episode. Failing that, King Solomon was also suggested. You know, the guy who wanted to split the baby in half? Also considered and removed was a giant spider which would attack the Doctor. Quite how writers Pip and Jane Baker went from legendary physicist to biblical ruler to eight-legged freak to none of them is a total mystery. But to be fair, the show was going through a weird time at this point, so we'll let them off. Number 8. I don't believe it! During the first series of New Who, Russell T Davis and the gang were still figuring out how to pitch the show to its new audience. It had to embody the elements of Doctor Who that everybody loved, but it also needed to bring the series up to date for the mid-2000s. Unfortunately, they went a little too far and almost traumatised the nation's children in the process. In The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances, the Doctor discovers that a strange virus is mutating people into gas mask wearing zombies. He chats to Richard Wilson's Doctor Constantine, who is looking after the afflicted before before he too gets converted, which is one of the scariest moments in the entire story. But apparently, the original plan for the character's transformation had to be toned down after being deemed too graphic by the BBC, including the removal of some visceral sound effects like the noise of Constantine's skull cracking. The powers that be decided that this was too frightening for young children and ordered that the scene be changed. To give the BBC some credit, there would have been a fair few complaints from parents if little Timmy had been allowed to listen to a man's head cracking or tucking into his Saturday night fish fingers. And let's be honest, the scene we did get was equally as terrifying and traumatising for any child that saw it. Number 7. Tall Pool's Big Moment Tall Paul Sturgis is an English former basketball player and the tallest man in Britain. Standing a whopping 7 foot 7, Sturgis has made a few brief forays into the world of acting since his sporting career ended. He was an uncredited stand-in for The Lord of the Rings The Rings of Power, presumably as a hobbit, <laughs> and was in an episode of Doctor Who during the show's 11th series. Well, almost. Sturgis was hired to play a gigantic creature with a snout and no eyes in It Takes You Away, but his part was entirely cut from the end product. He presumably would have appeared during the anti-zone sequences, as this was where he was pictured in a behind-the-scenes photo. So why was his part removed? Well, maybe somebody discovered that the BBC pays actors by the inch and decided it was a waste of money. That was a joke, by the way. Number 6. Torchwood's Library Series 8's Listen sees the Twelfth Doctor and Clara on the trail of a mysterious creature that cannot be seen and hides in darkness. The episode takes them all over the place, from Danny Pink's childhood orphanage to Gallifrey to the very end of the universe. It almost went somewhere else too, somewhere with a connection to a much-missed Doctor Who spin-off. As revealed by Stephen Moffat during a 2020 watch-along of the episode, a scene was written that took our heroes to an old library. Named the 50 Room, it was apparently in the possession of Torchwood before the Doctor stole it from them. There was also some dialogue about how the Doctor one day destroys Twitter. Uh, can you get a move on with that one, Doctor? 
it's a right mess over there at the minute. This scene would have kicked off the main portion of the episode, as Clara would have spotted the word listen written on the wall in chalk. However, it was deemed unnecessary and was cut for budget reasons. Probably for the best. The last time the Doctor visited a library, a lot of people died. Number 5. No way that's going on TV. Fourth Doctor serial The Ark in Space followed our protagonist and his companions Sarah Jane Smith and Harry Sullivan to a seemingly abandoned space station. There they meet a chap called Noah. Noah, in an episode about an ark. <laughs> do you get it? And unfortunately, things do not end well for him. Noah ends up becoming infected by the alien species the Wirren, slowly transforming into one of them. He eventually succumbs to his condition before dying a grisly death. At one point in time, there was an extended sequence where Noah described both the pain and joy of becoming a Wirren, before begging someone to kill him. There was also going to be a moment where Noah's head split open with a shower of acidic goop. Unsurprisingly, both these moments were deemed to be too dark and were removed, with concerns that they would be too disturbing for children. So while audiences didn't get to hear Noah praying for his death, they did get to watch him slowly turn into a giant bug before blowing himself up. Number 4. A whole bunch of stuff from Twice Upon a Time When Peter Capaldi signed off as the Doctor, he did so in a very special episode. Twice Upon a Time not only served as the show's 2017 Christmas special, but it also introduced fans to David Bradley as the first Doctor. Bradley's Doctor has become a semi-regular fixture of New Who since his first appearance, and we almost ended up seeing a lot more of him around the 2017 festive period. According to a 2018 interview promoting the novelisation of the story, Siva Moffat revealed that 30 additional minutes of material was cut from the final broadcast of Twice Upon a Time. Twice Upon a Time is an hour long, so that means this incarnation would have lasted a whopping 90 minutes. We've never been given a concrete answer as to what was included in this cut material, though it's likely that more scenes recreating the Tenth Planet, the First Doctor's original regeneration story featuring William Hartnell, were present, along with more interaction between Bradley's First Doctor and Peter Capaldi's Twelfth. Also knowing Moffat, it probably would have involved more Mark Gatiss. Number 3. Queen Victoria's Dark Fate In the underrated Tooth and Claw, the Doctor and Rose travel back to the 1870s and met one of the longest reigning British monarchs of all time. Here, they must protect Queen Victoria from a ravenous beast. No, not Sean Ferrick on a Friday night, but an alien werewolf. Because he is the living embodiment of chaos, Russell T Davis very nearly had the werewolf succeed in this episode. Victoria's death would have then resulted in a split reality, creating the parallel universe seen in Rise of the Cybermen and the Age of Steel. Ooh, that's clever. In the end though, Russell T Davis opted not to kill Her Majesty, deciding that getting too weird with the timelines would have put casual viewers off. This was undoubtedly the right decision, as Doctor Who can very easily say, look, here's a parallel universe, without there needing to be a major inciting incident. That's exactly what happened with Pete's world and nobody batted an eyelid. But that is a really cool explanation, I'm not gonna lie. Number 2. Baker Breaks Bad Unfortunately, this entry has nothing to do with the fourth Doctor and Sarah Jane cooking meth in the desert. It's actually about the 1983 20th anniversary special The Five Doctors, which united every incarnation of the character for a one-off story. This adventure revolved around the Doctors joining forces to stop the rogue Time Lord President Barusa from gaining eternal life. Originally, the strongest portion of the narrative was going to centre around Tom Baker's fourth Doctor, as scriptwriter Terence Dix deemed him the most popular of the bunch. In this version of the episode, Dix intended to include several moments that deliberately misled the viewer into believing that Four was the villain, which, given Baker's popularity, was a good way to subvert expectations. However, when Baker went back and forth on joining the project and ultimately dropped out, the script was rewritten to give Peter Davison's fifth Doctor more to do, including giving him the scene where he discovered the traitorous Barusa, a scene that was originally intended for Baker. Number 1. River Song's Wardrobe it's safe to say that Alex Kingston's portrayal of River Song was a little on the spicy side. She's up there with Captain Jack as one of the universe's biggest flirts, and suffice to say, if the two ever shared the screen together, the internet would explode. However, one scene from the show's sixth series turned out to be too much, even by River's standards. If you watch the 2010 Christmas special A Christmas Carol right to the end, you'll see the trailer for series six, and in said trailer, you'll find a shot of River seemingly without clothes on. However, in Series 6, the shot is nowhere to be found. 
It was supposedly from the opening episode The Impossible Astronaut, where River would be showing off her bigger on the inside wardrobe. In the end, the shot was deemed too naughty for the show's primetime slot and was removed. Showrunner Stephen Moffat explained the decision on Twitter, saying, Deleted, yes. Too naughty, don't know what I was thinking. Uh, we could probably guess what you were thinking, Stephen. And that concludes our list. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell so you never miss a Who Culture video ever again. Also head over to Twitter and Instagram to follow us there. And I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Littlechild. I've been Ellie with Who Culture. And in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.